Welcome to Pollywog Lagoon. Today we have two giant egg surprises and this Cars 3, a big golden book to read, as well as Jackson Storm and Lightning McQueen joining us. See you soon. Okay, Jackson Storm and Lightning McQueen, what do you guys think we should do first? Read the book or open the giant egg surprise? <gasps> I'm thinking giant egg surprise. That's way more fun. Then we can read the book. Beep, 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 beep. Let's go ahead and open the purple giant egg surprise first. What do you think could be in this big old thing? Oh my goodness! It's Smokey! Doc Hudson's old trainer! Oh, this is awesome! Let's get Smokey out of here. Check out Smokey! Smokey is an orange old truck with lots of rust and some paint wear. Best dang garage in town. Okay, we have this big shiny pink egg left. Woo! Okay, what could be in store? Whoa! Oh, it is Sterling and Cruz Ramirez! Yay! Sterling is silver. And Cruz Ramirez is bright yellow. And she is super fast. She also has the number 95 like, guess who? If you guessed Lightning McQueen, you are right. They both have the number 95. Do you guys know what it's time for now? Story time, woohoo! Let's go ahead and read this Cars 3 book. Okay, a big golden book. Disney and Pixar's Cars 3. There's Lightning McQueen. Adapted by Bill Scullin and illustrated by the Disney Storybook Art Team. In the first Piston Cup race of the season, the undisputed champion, Lightning McQueen, was tearing up the track. His friends Bobby Swift, Cal Weathers, and Brick Yardley were right behind him. But when the checkered flag came down, it was Lightning McQueen for the win. Good job, Lightning. They are racing so fast. Lightning continued to race hard throughout the season, but one day a rookie racer surprised everyone in his first Piston Cup competition. Do you guys know who that might be? The rookie blew past Lightning to take first place. Whoa, said Lightning. Who is that? That's Jackson Storm, replied Bobby. After the race, Lightning congratulated Storm. The young racer smirked. You have no idea what a pleasure it is to finally beat you, he said. Thanks, said Lightning. Hang on. Did you say meet or beat? I think you heard me, said Storm. Oh, is Jackson Storm a little bit sassy? Yeah, a little bit confident. Jackson Storm was the best of the next generation of racers. The next gens were faster and more efficient than the veteran race cars. They trained on the newest technology and relied on analysis of advanced data, such as weight distribution and aerodynamics to give them the advantage on the track. In the following races, Storm won again and again. Many of the veteran racers retired or got replaced. They thought they could never be as fast as the next gens. Lightning refused to retire. In the season's final race, he put everything he had into beating Storm. Urgh, look at him. He is trying so hard to beat Jackson Storm. Crash! Coming out of his final pit stop, Lightning gained the lead, but seconds later Storm passed him, and Lightning pushed himself harder until screech, he lost control. Sally and the fans gasped. <gasps> Lightning spun around and flipped over and over, then finally came to a stop. Oh, uh-oh, a big crash, and it looks like Lightning McQueen has some serious owies. It took four months for Lightning to recover. With the new racing season just two weeks away, no one knew if he'd ever compete again. Lightning watched films of his mentor and crew chief, Doc Hudson. Doc had suffered a bad crash that ended his career. Lightning didn't want that to happen to him. I decide when I'm done, he told Sally and Mater. I need to talk to Rusty and Dusty. He was ready to leave Doc's garage, get a new paint job, and start training. Oh, look, back here, that must have been the big crash that took Doc Hudson. Rusty and Dusty were Lightning sponsors and the owners of Rusty's. They had a big surprise for number 95. 
a new training center. It had all the best technology, treadmills, virtual reality, and a state-of-the-art racing simulator. Lightning looked around in awe. Guys, how did you ever do this, he asked. We sold Rust Ease, Rusty and Dusty announced. We just realized you needed something we couldn't give you, Dusty said. They sold Rust Ease to a wealthy business car named Sterling. This shiny guy right here, Sterling, bought Rust Ease. Who could help Lightning get back into the game? Welcome to the Rust Ease Racing Center, said Sterling. I've been a fan of yours forever, and now to be your sponsor? How great is that? Sterling was super excited to be Lightning McQueen's new sponsor. Look at the big 95. After Lightning got a new look, Sterling brought Lightning to the racing simulator. Lightning watched in awe as a yellow car sped on the simulator like a professional. Who's a racer, he asked. No, 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 she's a trainer, said Sterling. Cruz Ramirez, the best trainer in the business. When Cruz saw Lightning, she wasn't impressed. He's obviously an imposter, she said. He looks old and broken down with flabby tires. Hey, said Lightning, I do not. Use that, shouted Cruz. Cruz Ramirez wants Lightning McQueen to use the simulator to see what he's got. Cruz started Lightning out with an aerobics class. We need to loosen those ancient joints. First the wheels, forward and rest, forward and rest. Then Cruz challenged Lightning on the treadmill. This thing's only going five miles per hour, Lightning complained. We'll work up to the higher speed, said Cruz, right after you take your nap. Oh my goodness, Cruz wants Lightning McQueen to take a nap. After a few days, Sterling decided that Lightning would not compete in the new racing season. Your speed and performance aren't where they need to be. I'm sorry. Lightning knew he would never get faster by training with technology. I'll train like I did with Doc, he said. I'll get my tires dirty on every dirt track from here to Florida. He promised with his training, he would beat Storm. Sterling made a deal with Lightning. If Lightning lost the Florida 500, he would retire and promote the number 95 brand. If he won, he could continue racing. Lightning agreed, and soon he was zooming down Fireball Beach. Cruz tried to track Lightning's speed by racing alongside him, but she kept getting stuck in the sand. The beach ate me, she said. By the end of the day, Lightning had taught Cruz how to race on sand. She was finally able to track his speed. You're still slower than Storm, said Cruz. Look at her getting stuck in the sand right there. And Lightning McQueen has no problem. Ooh, welcome to Thunder Hollow Speedway. Lightning saw a sign nearby for Thunder Hollow Speedway. That's what I need to race against for actual racers, he said. Mac brought Lightning and Cruz to the track. Then Lightning put on a muddy disguise and signed up for the next race. He had no idea it was a special event. The Thunder Hollow Crazy 8 Demolition Derby. A crew member painted a number on Cruz's side. I shouldn't be out here, she exclaimed, but the gate was locked. Lightning and Cruz would have to compete. Banged up vehicles of all kinds tried to knock each other out of the competition. The undefeated champion, a fierce school bus named Miss Fritter, took aim at Lightning and Cruz. Your license plates are going to look real nice in my collection, Miss Fritter said. Oh my goodness, look at that course. And look there, Miss Fritter tearing it up. And right here too, she's got one mean grill. Lightning helped Cruz survive the race. Cruz even won, but Lightning was angry. I can't get any faster because I'm too busy taking care of my trainer, he exclaimed. This is my last chance. Cruz, if I lose, I never get to do this again. If you were a racer, you'd know what I'm talking about. Cruz was hurt. I have wanted to become a racer forever because of you, she said. When she had gotten her first chance to race, she thought the other racers were bigger, stronger, and more confident. She was, I just felt it was my one shot and I didn't take it. She became a trainer instead. Cruz decided to return to the training center. After she left, Lightning called Mater and admitted that things weren't going well. Mater knew Lightning missed getting advice from Doc. There weren't nobody smarter than old Doc, except for maybe whoever taught him. That gave Lightning an idea. Smokey! Mater, you're brilliant! See? Smokey was Doc Hudson's old trainer. The next morning, Lightning caught up to Cruz and apologized for getting upset. He told her he knew someone who could help. Mac drove them to Thomasville Speedway. They saw a sign that read, Welcome to Thomasville, home of the fabulous Hudson Hornet. They had arrived at Doc Hudson's home track. Want to check out the track of the greatest racer of all time, Lightning asked Cruz. The two friends sped around the course, and as they came around the curve, they saw someone on the track. It was Doc Hudson's old crew chief, Smokey. This is the old track right here, out in the old country land. It's like a little farm and water tower. Smokey led Lightning and Cruz to a local hangout called the Cotter Pen. Some of the greatest racers who ever lived were there. They were known as the legends. River Scott Lightning told Cruz, Junior Midnight Moon, Louis Barnstormer Nash. They all raced with Doc. The legends told Lightning and Cruz about their friend Hud and the famous Hudson Hornet. Hud was the fastest racer to this side of Mississippi, said River Scott, until he wasn't, added Smokey. Everything changed when the rookie showed up. In one race, Hud challenged the rookie for first place and got slammed into the wall. Hud knew he couldn't outrun him, Smokey said. He'd have to outthink him. The fabulous Hudson Hornet used the wall to launch himself into the air and flip over the rookie. He came down in first place. Here he is, flipping over the wall, and he won first place. 
Smokey agreed to train Lightning, but number 95 needed to understand something. You're old. Accept it, Smokey said. You'll never be as fast as Storm, but you can be smarter. To help motivate Lightning, Cruz would stand in for Storm. The Legends turned Cruz into a race car. She even got a 2.0 on her side, just like Storm. You're going down, Lightning McQueen, she said. Smokey hooked Lightning and Cruz to heavy trailers. You ain't gonna pass Storm moving like that, he shouted. Let's go. To test Lightning's handling skills, Smokey let a herd of tractors onto a field. Sneak through the window, he yelled as Lightning and Cruz tried to weave through the tractors. Lightning was feeling better than ever as the first race of the new season drew near. Lightning and Cruz took one last practice run around the Thomasville track. Cruz hit the gas and pulled away from Lightning. He gave it all he had, but he couldn't catch up. Everyone was speechless. They didn't know if Lightning could win in Florida, but there was no more time to train. Lightning needed to leave. I want to thank everyone for the training, he said. He rolled into Max's trailer and set out for the race. There's the trailer. It's time to go. The sellout crowd at the Florida 500 was electric. When the green flag dropped, Lightning raced hard, passing cars left and right. Not too shabby, Smokey exclaimed. He had come to Florida to be Lightning's crew chief. Over his headset, Lightning heard Sterling telling Cruz to return to the racing center. You're a trainer, remember? Not a racer, he shouted. Suddenly, Lightning remembered all his training with Cruz. She deserved to fulfill her dream of becoming a racer. At that moment, there was a crash on the track. Lightning dodged the wreck and headed back to the pit. Smokey, I need Cruz, he shouted over the headset. Cruz zoomed onto the track. When she reached the path of racers, she was so nervous that she slowed down. Come on, pick it up, yelled Smokey. Tell her the school bus of death is after her, Lightning said. Cruz smiled and sped up. Eventually, Lightning took over for Smokey on the crew chief stand. She reminded Cruz about Thomasville. Sneak through the window. Cruz visualized the tractors from her training, and she found an opening and weaved through the racers. The crowd went wild for this exciting new competitor. Finally, Cruz caught up to the lead racer, Jackson Storm. Storm was shocked to see her racing next to him, but he wasn't about to let her pass. I don't think so, he shouted. Then he slammed Cruz into the wall, but Cruz stayed calm and remembered Doc's old racing trick. She turned her wheels into the wall, shot into the air, and flipped over Storm. She sped across the finish line as the crowd cheered. Woo! Cruz won the race. Do you see Cruz? Way to go, Cruz! After the race, Sterling asked Cruz to join his team. Cruz quit instead. She would never race for Sterling after the way he treated her. Tex, the owner of Dynaco, overheard Cruz and offered her a racing sponsorship with Dynaco. Lightning was surprised to learn that he and Cruz had both won. Lightning had started the race and Cruz had finished it. He could continue racing and didn't have to work for Sterling. Back in Radiator Springs, Cruz showed off her new number, Doc Hudson's 51. She was an official race car. Lightning had a new look too. He was decked out in blue paint just like Doc. He was able to keep his number 95 after Tex bought Rusty's from Sterling. Lightning's racing days weren't over yet, but for now, he focused on getting Cruz ready for the rest of the season. Cruz couldn't wait to begin. Bring it on, old man, she cheered. Lightning and Cruz zoomed off and raced around Willie's Butte, ready to work together as a team. The End Look at Cruz Ramirez and Lightning McQueen. Thank you so much for joining me. I had such a great time reading the story and opening up the surprise eggs. If you want to see more fun to come, please hit the red subscribe button. Bye-bye.